Hour two overdrive continues. Brought to you by FanDuel, bringing you everything from the opening line of the final score. Brian Hazio, Doug Jeff O'Neill, Jamie Noodles, McLennan, and there he is, Luke Wilson in studio. <laughs> Hi, Pardee! Pardee, hey! how we doing? There it this is. This fraud joker here, he loves the pack, or he loves the pack, so let's give him the game. Go ahead. You want me to have the game wow. right off the bat? You're going to throw that at me? And there's no way you're getting this one right. Well, I cannot no. wait to hear this reasoning. Me too. <laughs> me right. too. He's a joke. So let's, <laughs> <laughs> let's clarify the line here, Grappler. You just told me the line has moved back towards Green Bay. It's a two-point spread now. Excuse yes, me. Yes, courtesy of our friends, just, at, friends at FanDuel, Grappler, the, the we spread just has went moved to down. commercial break, and it was two and a half. It moves. Yeah, and since then, it's changed. I don't know what to tell you. I'm All looking right. at it right now. So it's two. The, point, the spread is two tonight. Um, I'm going to take the Detroit Lions. I'm going to lay the points. Against your pack? I am because oh, it's a, it's what a classic. A complete fraud. I'll give you, I'll give you the reasoning here. <laughs> I'll give you the, the reasoning here. There's, a, there's actually a happy hedge. I think Corona calls it that, where I can live in both worlds here. Um, but here's, here's where I'm at. Bakhtiari's been placed on IR. Jenkins is banged up. Like Their, their line is banged up. Um, yes, Jones is back tonight. Watson is back tonight. But so you know that. You know yes, Watson's back. That's that's the report. I mean, I, I haven't seen it become official yet, but that's my understanding is he's playing. Am it I, is. He is playing. Okay, so he's playing. Watson's playing. Jones is playing. The Lions have owned the Packers recently. Jerry Goff shockingly has owned them. I loved what I saw out of Jordan Love down 17 nothing, storming back and winning that game last week. I just feel like this is still a bigger moment for the Lions because the Lions are expected to win this division. Agreed. The Packers are the young team that are up and coming. I still think the Packers are in a much better spot today than I thought they would be a few weeks ago, but I think there's going to be some bumps in the road still. They're still the youngest team in the league. I just I, I feel like the Lions win tonight. I think it's wow. a good game. Lambeau Field? Even at Lambeau. Lambeau. We saw what happened week seven, 18 last year. It's the uh, only thing that me. stumbled. The Let only the thing that got us last week. have his response to your selection. Go, Go ahead. Luke. I Thoughts. mean, Lions. I'll, I'll lay the points. Lions minus two at Lambeau tonight. First and foremost, you're. Sp- I mean, I agree with some of, not all of what you said, but you're speaking as if the Lions are a mature team that have won a lot of meaningful games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In the history of their franchise, they might have won five total meaningful games. Valid. Yeah. Okay. So the Valid. idea that you're just like, yeah, casually, the Lions are going to show up, roll into Lambeau. Everyone in, in the Lions fans are classic about this. Mm-hmm. Oh, last year we beat the Packers in week 18. That's right. Congratulations. The Seahawks won the, in the earlier window. It meant nothing to you guys. Mm-hmm. You're telling me that Detroit is going to walk into Lambeau today, play clean, fundamental football, beat this team, and take control of the division. Something yes. this franchise has yet to do in the last, I mean, since I, I've been born. i got to be honest, Patricia. guys. Ryan Patricia. <laughs> I've got to be honest. I'm taking Green Bay. I think Green Bay wins tonight. Do you think Green and Bay I, wins? I do. I do. Like, I've just been, I've had my eye kind of on them watching the games, and I know you love them, Hayes. So, yeah, listen, like that, I, I just, I, I think they win. I think well, you should. I think you Listen, should reconsider. Here's the thing, man. I like that noodles. Here's the thing, noodles. If they win, I'm happy anyway, dude. That's the yeah, whole point. Yeah, but then you're the losing hedge. critical points to these dude, guys. You, I'm on fire right you, now. I'm on right, fire. I'm on fire. We That's had a small blemish. A small blemish. And Tiana you know, Pro gosh. athletes is one, one, and one. And everyone wants to act like the sky's falling. How'd I yeah, do but last this week? guy, can you talk to this guy? He thinks he's like creeping around, and we've been like creeping taking a around. Yeah, it's dump, ten, it's ten five ter- and two. It's ten five and two, dude. We're we're two miles into a, a marathon here, and I'm hot on your heels. No, you're not. Yes, I am. With this a win tonight saying, and a dog, big weekend. You, know, you look at. Let's reflect. You look at last yes, weekend. Let's reflect. Okay, we we have a great win in the Steelers game. Hartsy warned me. I got to apologize. He told me not to trust Kirk. Mm -hmm. Kirk jammed us up. That's right. You know, but good pro athletes, we go back and forth. (laughs) Yeah, it's like a wavelength. It's a (laughs) mental strength in a wavelength. I won't do that again. Exactly. You won't. You better not. (laughs) And then we get a push. You can't win on a push. No, and the push was incredibly greasy, and it it was much like the the push that I suffered a week before. And now all of a sudden we're cold? Yeah, I think you guys are cool. I mean, the week before, Odell? you were cool too, right? You were picking Dude, losers. I'll week tell you the guys week one before, thing. we were undefeated. No, that's Anything not true. comes our way in the future, anything of consequence with Kirk Cousins, like anywhere on the docket, I, 
I'm I'm fading it and I'm flushing it right yeah. down. The, I'm nowhere <laughs> going near that guy. I don't blame you. That guy breaks my heart twice a month. Yeah, in that's some our capacity. only loss. Correct me if I'm wrong you. here, but that's our only loss we've called. Correct? I believe uh, we're yes. seven yeah, one and one. Possibly, but yeah. I mean, listen, I'm four three and one. Like I'm picking winners. That's not dude. good. That's exceptional. You extrapolate that over the course of <laughs> like fifty games. That's a Hall of Fame Sam Rothstein type number. That's making wow. a lot of people money. That <laughs> is people in himself. my organism that are getting paid off my shrapnel. Like I am literally losing money trying to pick it up off the floor. Oh dog, no, you listen to this guy? That's how good I am, and that's that's how I feel about this game tonight. I do. I I love I love the Packers and you know I, psychologically is, Luke, I want to sec. reverse this into existence. This guy, if you've ever heard, and Luke, you and I and Noodles would know this. <laughs> when an executive has <laughs> got a dumpster fire on their hands, they always to to just back it up. They talk about the positives that are going on, yeah. And that's exactly yeah. what Brian Patricia, Matt Patricia's <laughs> brother, is sounding like right now. <laughs> Brian Patricia's yeah. got some rings, man. Let's not forget well, that. You know what it is? It's it's when you have a dumpster fire, it's it's the art of like distraction. Mm-hmm. Look over here. Look over here. Yeah. Like all the yeah. time. Like don't don't focus on this. Focus on that. I don't know if Hayes is doing that though. You're not trying to distract people. No. I mean, listen. yesterday you had the porta potty. Like some of you were had some distractive comments yesterday today you've been on point i think yeah. i've been very sound very reasonable and i'm just trying to figure out how all of a sudden we're considered in your mind to be going cold when we I have know. one loss well you've picked no you've picked a it was a fourth no we haven't you're seven one and one yeah. yes that's one loss and it was a it was a six yard pass it was but it was last week last week you guys were one one and one that's a that's a cooler based on previous standards or I am moving in a different direction. <laughs> like I said, that like I said, factual, that, that is, is factual. ridiculous commentary. Give him, the, give him the sound. That's what it is. <laughs> I'll tell you what. Travis Kelsey might take a knee on Sunday night and propose to Taylor Swift because he's got a real one. If she shows up to watch a Bears game one week and a Jets game the next, she's that's, not coming out. She's, she's show, not showing That's up. the report. Like reports, like there are legitimate NFL insiders breaking the whereabouts. Security of is Swift. prepping for her. Exactly. Well, they got to give a heads up. She's coming. She's going to be at MetLife on Sunday night. That is a committed, significant other. I don't know if I'm buying that, Hayes. No. Even if she shows up, and again, I this is not my forte. You know, relationships and that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, just listening to like the conversation, like I caught a couple of clips of Kelsey on the podcast there. Mm-hmm. You know, it doesn't really. I'm assuming Travis. We got drafted the same year as 33. I'm assuming, you know, the way he's chatting about her, like that's not really what a 33 year old talks like. Their significant other or they're dating. I see. especially not like it, it. It seems to me a little cringe. Uh, it, it is a little bit because it's so public, but you know, there, you can't. There's nothing you can hide when you're dealing with Taylor Swift. You're you're in a different do you stratosphere think there's any, at that like, point. Combos though, where they're both kind of like, hey, you know, let's lightly hang out, whatever that means. And for our him off the field and her, I don't know if you'd call it off the music industry, off the stage, off yeah. the stage. There it is, career. It's a good thing. Yeah, I think so. Like, do you think this is more of a business deal? No, I think there's some legitimacy behind it, but I do think there's a building block. Listen, Kelsey, everyone's seeing his the amount of people buying his jersey. He's added wow. like five hundred thousand Instagram followers in a week. Okay, his podcast the number one pod on Apple. I get that. The, the like jersey that is, one, the jersey one. Hear me on this. I saw that. I get the podcast. Does he make money on that? Yeah, you do get some. Oh, that's pretty. But good. where yeah. I get confused is. Who is buying these jerseys? So, like, this is where my head goes. Are all of these Taylor Swift fans going and being like, now we need a Travis Kelsey jersey? I find that hard to believe. Mm-hmm. I want to so, circle back and figure out what a light hangout is. I, <laughs> I've like, never I've never heard the term, and I want to get it pro- I, th- like, you I, know, I know what it is. I know what it is. <laughs> it's a casual – like, that's a college hangout. I don't know. They You, you hang out. You – Netflix and chill type of thing. Maybe there's a hookup, maybe not. Mm-hmm. But it's not, hey, we're in a relationship. It's just a casual chill. Like, that's what people in college do. And yeah. I never went to college, right? I don't <laughs> think you can ease into a relationship, though, with, like, Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey. These aren't normal people. Like, I don't know. I think there's got to be security around all the time. They're flying all over the world. 
My point is, she went to see a Bears game last week and a Jets game. This She's going to watch Justin Fields and follow that up with a shot of Zach Wilson. Yeah, That's that, a commitment, man. That's I'm the NFL sorry. not putting their best foot forward. They got to flex these <laughs> games. Like, I don't, I, like, it's going to be painful, too. If the Chiefs blow up the Jets, Collinsworth's going to be talking about Taylor Swift and Tariko. But It'll why be would non-stop. you flex it, though? Did, didn't I read that like 24 million people watched that game the other night? Like, that's a that's good That's all point. Swifties or whatever. Like, why would you flex that? If anything, it's like, yeah, these are going to be dumpster fire games. Taylor Swift is there. They She just saved our ratings. That's are actually you, a great point. Are you telling me that Swifties are tuning in? Yes, to just get 100%. a peek of her yes. in the in the press box. Yes, that, that, yes. Is, that is fact. Um, Noodles is right. The Chiefs Bears game, which was in the four o'clock window, which is historically like that's a big window for for ratings. Was it had like 24, 25 million people, yeah. and it was the highest rated game of the week. And women ages twelve to forty nine was like skyrocketing. It was like yes. off the charts how many women were watching. I saw that. So so are these are people buying the jersey. Possibly. I refuse to believe that a grown man. Is like I'm buying this guy's jersey because he's dating no, Taylor Swift. No, I know. I, I can't well, imagine there that is either. A few of those. And possibly, <laughs> possibly. But you're right, though, Noodles. It's actually a great point that I think the NFL and NBC would flex this game into Sunday Night Football if they knew she was going. Like even with Zach right. Wilson hurt, if Mahomes was hurt, they'd flex it into primetime because she's there. That's how big Taylor Swift like, is. I, Her effect, and and she is, she's bigger than him. No, oh, it's no not even doubt close. about it. Like it's not even Zillion. close. But not it's even like close, dude. But it it just this is Elvis in the building. This is Michael Jackson. This That's is right. the modern day. Like so, they are gonna have to wheel her in in a popcorn truck or whatever they did the other day. Like the gimp in the box. Like that's really what it was. Yeah. They stuffed her in a box and wheeled her in because of security. So the NFL must be elated. That, oh, this is she's huge there. news. Uh, Goodell will find yeah. his way there. I guarantee you. Goodell will be sniffing around. He'll be. He'll be. <laughs> kick, there'll be a ton of hangers on. I wonder if Joe Namath will be kicking around. Old oh, Joe, they might not to knock he, on that He door. will not be allowed to be served. Oh, let's go <laughs> get the fur coat out again. Joe well, that's Namath the thing, guys. Like you can, around. you can go on a tirade like that, but the Jets could easily say. Take a lap, bud. Like we don't want it. We don't want it around. Yeah, Namath was carving Wilson on radio in New York. Like carving them. Like I, I saw that, and I do get it. And, it, you know, there's chatter about all these guys spilling the sideline. I know Aaron Rodgers is like, we need to grow up, blah, 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 blah. But the reality of the situation there and what bothers me is that if any other position or player was playing as poorly as Zach Wilson, you will not be coddled. Like, if they're Out of tight the league, end group, dude. yes, if their tight end group consistently plays as poorly as Zach Wilson does, their coach will stroll in there and say, we're working out tight ends today. We got to get better at this, or we're going to find somebody who who will. And they'll consistently make calls, whether it's a rookie that no one drafted or a guy that's been on the street for the last four weeks. They will do everything they can to find someone. Mm-hmm. you know. And that's just the reality of every other person in the league. But somehow, Zach Wilson gets away with this stuff, and it's just very, very strange to me how they don't hold him accountable to the same standards as the rest of the team is. Yeah. Luke, in your time, did you ever see a guy that was like Kurt Warner packing groceries and then all of a sudden they're they're getting worked out and then all of a sudden they're playing? So our second year, my second year, our Super Bowl run where we lost to the Patriots, a guy down the stretch and in that Super Bowl was Chris Matthews. Chris Matthews, we signed mid year. I think he got he had like one hundred plus yards, I want to say, in the Super Bowl with a touchdown. Mid year Beginning of the year, he was working at Foot Locker. He was working at Foot Locker <laughs> wow. the beginning of the year. They picked this dude up. He came in there, started on practice squad, special teams. Actually, was the guy who caught the onside kick against the Packers when uh, Bostic fumbled it there. Mm-hmm. Right into Chris Matthews' hands. And in the Super Bowl, I think he had like a buck 20 and a tutty. How did, if, he, how did he get found? found how, do they, how do you locker? find a guy at Foot Locker? I'm telling you, they have, there's a weird thing about the NFL compared to any other sport where there's no minor league. So, you know, like hockey, for example, you need somebody, you go to the AHL. Baseball, they have right. seven different teams. For us, if you don't make a practice squad, you're into this abyss where, and now I know there's the XFL or the USFL, and they're trying to figure that out, but... In 2013, 2014, that didn't really exist. 
So now all of a sudden, if you're not playing, it was like, okay, what do you do? Well, you just stay in shape and you get a part-time job and then you'll just, agents are calling, hey, we're looking for a wideout. We want a, you know, a tall kind of go ball wideout. They bring him in on usually Tuesdays, sometimes Mondays. And they'd have a, they had our own little room in Seattle where all the little tryout players would go. We'd all see him like walk in, they'd give him a pair of shorts and be like, today we're working out seven tight ends. And the tight ends would come in there and the scouts would be and they'd have a, a notepad on every single guy. Chris Matthews must have balled out during his thing and they found a spot for him. And the next thing you know, he's catching touchdowns in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Could have. Wow. If we score on the last play of the game, uh, which we all know what happened there. But there's potential that Chris Matthews was the MVP of the game. That's wild, man. <laughs> JP was saying he was with the CFL the year before. Yeah. And I guess was working security at uh, Foot Locker. Security at Foot Locker. <laughs> so that was it. I thought he was on I the guess. floor. I knew it was something at Foot no, Locker. Dude, was how, has no one made a, floor. how has no one made a movie out of that? Like, that's a movie well, did, ever Let me ask one, you, though, did he go on? He, Go did he go on to have a successful career or no? Or I like, did he kinda... believe he ended up, I think we released him the next year. I think he went to Baltimore, was kind of a special teams guy there. Don't quote me on this. And then I think he went back to the CFL. Mm-hmm. Um, I follow him on Instagram. So that's my source of information for this right now. <laughs> well, but still like if he, you're right. It, the movie would have been made if he won the MVP. Yes. Like if you guys just handed the ball off to Marshawn Lynch, Correct. there's a movie about this guy. Yes. Coming, Basically there's a movie security at Foot Locker. Dude. Right. I think it was like a, uh, it was definitely over a hundred. Hopefully we can get stats yeah, on that, we'll but I'm like 90 percent sure he had over 100 yards in the Super Bowl. That's incredible. Do you ever lie in bed at night thinking about the end of that game? All the time, all the time. That and would honestly, like, I, I, I don't want to bring it up, but no, like, that would fair. chap my ass. It does every night of my life. <laughs> the worst <laughs> part for me, oh dog, is that is not. I mean, it's an awful feeling that we couldn't went back to back. Like you talk about, there's very few teams that have ever done that. Yeah. So as far as like the history of the NFL, you know, say that you were a part of a back-to-back stretch was pretty incredible. But what I think hurts me more was that moment caused so many problems in the next, let's call it three to four years in our locker room where guys didn't trust the coaching staff. Guys didn't like the offense and defense didn't get along. A lot of people thought that it was Pete's way of trying to promote Russ Instead of Marshawn, you know, and they felt like we should have been talking more about this legendary defense. And it just created this like wild, toxic environment where it was like every man for themselves. Over and then all one of, play. Yes. And then all of a sudden you saw, you know, next year we're I think we were ten five and one in a wild card spot. The year after that, ten and six. Uh, you know, in both of those years, I felt like we were just as talented, but we just weren't the same, you know, the brotherhood was kind of gone to a degree. We get bumped by both teams that we got bumped by in the playoffs ended up going to the Super Bowl. The first year, I believe it was the Panthers. The next year it was the Falcons and when they crumbled it. And then uh, the year after that, we went nine and seven, missed the playoffs and everybody was gone. And it was like, we got to start rebuilding this thing. And I get it, but that's where it kind of bothers me is. You know, I heard Pete on a podcast the other day. I was on a podcast with KJ Wright, who was a big member of that team. And everybody kind of points to that moment. And for me, it's just a big what if. Beyond the, yes, we would have had two Super Bowls, but how much further could we have taken that run? So that's really the part that stings. Where Appreciate you at- the answer, Parzi, and I love you, pal. There you go. <laughs> had to bring it up. Yeah. I love that you brought it up, too. I'm, <laughs> I'm sensing friction between the two of you. Absolutely not. Yeah. I'm sensing friction. Absolutely not. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what do you make of uh, Bill's Dolphins this weekend, where the Bills, I think, are a minus two and a half or minus three point favorite at home? Yeah. And, I, and Josh uh, Allen's owned Miami in his career. He has. I think the key to the Bills right now is to pressure Tua. So, Again, X and O wise, I don't think anyone in the league can really match up with this Dolphins offense um, because they can also run the ball. You know, it's not like they're just limited to throwing it. So to me, it's if I'm sitting there, Sean McDermott's now their D coordinator is like, hey, okay, let's do as much as we can on the back end. But I think last week they had nine sacks. I don't think they'll get nine this week, but let's put as much pressure on Tua as we can. Let's force them to get the ball out quickly and tackle well. 
And then on the other side of the ball, if it becomes a shootout, to me it's Gabe Davis because we all know Diggs and Allen are going to get theirs. Like that duo is unstoppable. It's just a matter of how much. But I found that when the Bills get into trouble, it becomes throw to Stephon Diggs, and if it's not there, schoolyard football and make a miraculous play, which can lead to a pick. So to me, if Gabe Davis can you know get a couple explosives early, alleviate some pressure on Stephon Diggs, this bad boy could go either way, mm-hmm. but that's a big if. Again, I think uh, it'll be a great matchup. My early lane would be the Dolphins, but we'll see. Yeah, it feels like that's because of the game they came off last week that everyone is going to hammer the Dolphins. And that that's what leads me to kind of lean towards the Bills because of their history against the Dolphins. Also, like the Dolphins have traveled a lot early in the year. They went to L.A., then they went up to, to Boston, then back home. Now they're up to Buffalo. It just this feels like a classic NFL game where you're like obviously Miami best team in the league right now hottest team of course they're going to keep it rolling and the Bills people are going to say well remember what happened week one they couldn't beat I don't know Bills look pretty good the last two weeks they man. do I think that defense is legit I think there's an argument for both teams though that they haven't really played anyone in a sense of like so the Bills correct me if I'm wrong have a win against the Raiders and the Commanders yes. who I don't think are legit you know, contenders at all. I don't think that's a controversial statement. But the no. flip side, you've got the Patriots is a win for the Dolphins. Chargers was impressive. The Chargers in was LA. impressive. But then right. you got Patriots and the Broncos. Broncos so count. I do think, you know, uh, after three weeks, it's very early. I'd say the Dolphins have been more impressive. But I'm not sure either one of them have really been tested yet. So we'll see. They'll get. They'll both be tested on Sunday. It's be a great game, though. Yeah. Like between tonight and Sunday, feels like a battle for the division, right? Like Detroit, it's, Green Bay. Yeah. Buffalo, the, Miami. Tonight, I'm excited for. I think it's gonna be a great game tonight. I, I do get worried right now too with the mental state of Josh Allen. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I sit there during the week and I I like listening to guys talk and you know, being a guy who's been in some interviews before. I think not necessarily from what athletes say, but kind of their mannerisms. You can tell a lot about how they're feeling on the inside. And like I listened to Tua, and Tua's like, we got to beat these guys. Like he seems very cool, calm, collected, as he should be. He's just put up 70 points. Mm -hmm. Where like Josh to me still feels very, very stiff. I feel like he, the pressure, which it is to a degree, is there's a lot of pressure on him. You know, if he throws two picks in this game, people are really going to start questioning. You know what this guy's all about. So I am a little nervous about Josh Allen's mental state. I mean, physically, the guy's one of the best quarterbacks in the league. But is there it'll a be number? Is there yeah, a number of nervous? Shade of a fifty shade of underpants <laughs> on Josh Allen. <laughs> so, you, got, you got to explain. Yeah, how does that? How does that scale work? You can't just throw that at someone without <laughs> so, any uh, understanding. Yeah, oh, oh, lay it out there. Lay, lay it out what one is and what fifty is. One is a fresh crisp white pair of Calvin Kleins. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 50 is not that. Yeah, got it. 50 the Delta shades flight. of underpants. Where are you with Josh Allen? 40. Ooh, oh, man, that's, that's a tint. Wow. Those are going in the garbage. Yeah, yeah. You can't clean them. Those are... here's, here's my thing. Let's, and I, I don't, I'm not oh, saying this crap. will happen, 40. but. If Josh Allen goes out, let's say this becomes a shootout. Let's say the defense doesn't hold up, which I'm not saying that will happen, but Tua has his way. They start scoring points, and Josh has to answer. And they're they're Then the goofiness up. starts. Yes, and then all of a sudden it's like, okay, Josh has a couple good throws, throws a pick. Uh-oh, throws another pick. This becomes a 10-point, 14-point win for Miami. You're sitting there right now, two and two, with a loss to Zach Wilson's Jets mm. and a division team that just beat you by 14. And the media starts killing this guy because he threw more picks. I get very anxious for him. So that's why I would say, to me, even if they lose, I'd like to see Josh Allen really be play turnover free football for his sake. Yeah. Does it, but it does seem likely that Miami's going to find a way to put. Points on the board, right? Yes. Like the way they're set up and that McDaniel, the way he's coaching right now. And I think Waddle's been cleared from concussion. Waddle's he's likely cleared. playing. I it's funny, but the and I believe they it's pronounced a chan, not 
Yes, he changed it. Changed it. it. He so wanted everyone to know that. No, that his last name is a Chan. A Chan. But that's their third string back. Mm-hmm. I mean, the guy had four TDs last week. So right. most sir. He may not even be in the playbook this Correct. weekend. They'll have uh, Ahmed, I believe, is their second string guy. So now all of a sudden, it's like even if you focus on Waddle and Tyreek, you got Moser, you've got Ahmed, you've got a Chan. Like they have so many different weapons, and I think Mike McDaniel's is really in his bag right now, figuring out how to call plays, what to do. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be very easy for this Buffalo Bills yeah. defense. This feels like it's a real the the pressure's on Buffalo clearly because they're at home, they're two and one. And it, it feels like it's on Sean McDermott almost as much as it is Allen because McDermott, he's a defensively sound coach. Very. Leslie Frazier's not there anymore. He's running the playbook. Like, he's spent all week cooking up ways to stop an offense to put 70 on the board. 70. That's going to be In an tough, NFL man. game. Yeah, but if he can't do it, it's like, what are you bringing to the table in the modern NFL game? Yeah. If you can't take on that challenge. And listen, keeping them to 28 is probably a win. Agreed. It's a win, right? Agreed. Agreed. But, you know, no one's expecting them to put up 10 points. But if you get cooked for 40, 45, 47, then what are you doing in the modern game that's all about offense, offense, offense with a defensively sound coach? Like, I, it seems like it's almost a referendum yeah. on McDermott this that's, week. I, McDermott, Josh Allen, that's why the number's 40 for the 50 shades. It's a lot of wow. shade, man. That's a lot of work <laughs> you put is. into those. You're, you got to check your diet, dude. Yeah, you got some issues. 40 man. is a dark brown pair of Calvin Kleins. That's, okay. I'm telling you, dog, that's how I'm feeling about the situation. Now, all right, all right. if wow. Josh Allen comes and silences everybody, that number goes way down. But I think that's a big if this week. There's a lot of questions, and I think a lot of Bills fans probably yep. feel the same way. All right, there you go. Hayes and company, we're on the Lions, minus two tonight. That means, uh, conversely, Team Owen Wilson, I guess you're rooting for the Pack, plus two. Yeah. Go Pack Go. There you go. I'm going to have my cheese hat on. Go Pack Go. I'm good with that. Yeah, I can't Joe believe Bowen it. It's all good, disgust- man. If the Packers Joe Bowen win. is disgusted with you and Listen, the it's, Suns. It's a spread, dude. It's I can't. You know, <laughs> if, if the Packers win tonight, I'm happy. I don't we're care We're going to call the Monday Nighter, oh, dog. And I don't care what the number is. I'm going with the Seahawks. It's just, That's it's, right. It's really? just a, you yeah, know, it's you a go. rule. It's just a, it's a code you live by. Well, that's, that's why right. I'm a winner and why you're losers. Well, we're right? seven, one, and one. <laughs> yeah, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> I have principles. And I, it, it makes no. I'm a man of integrity when it comes to gambling, and uh, I intend on catching you guys. Integrity. All right, we'll leave it there. Good seeing you, buddy. Good to see you. There too. he is, Luke Wilson. Part C. Team Owen Wilson. Love you, brother. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on TSN two. All right, our buddy Mark Masters will join us in about a half an hour. Catch up with Don LaGreca, the Michael K. Show on ESPN Radio down in New York. New York Radio legend, one of our favorites. Oh, man, he'd have some juicy nuggets right now on the Jets. <laughs> yeah. But he, the Yankees, wow. all of it. Stanton. That's right. Um, the East improving the Knicks. You know, I don't think the Knicks were ever in on Damian Lillard, but still, Knicks are always chasing. Man, are people in Miami complaining? Like, now everyone's like, oh, they just wouldn't trade with Miami. Portland, they had it out against. Yes, they, yeah. yes, they should have it out against Miami. Yeah. Because if I'm an owner, we said it yesterday. Okay, we'll, we'll meet your, your, your desire, your want. But yeah. we're not trading you where you want to go. Sorry. Right. Just, I, out of spite, I'm not doing it. I think that I think there could be legitimacy in that, that their a, his agent, Damian Lillard's agent, overplayed his hand. He tried to sewer the whole process. And Portland was like, screw you. But hey, we're, there's we're no way of you, massaging but... that transaction to where it's a smooth sailing operation. Like if you tell an organization the franchise player wants out and he also wants to go to Miami, first of all, you're a little bit taken back, and then second of all, then you get pissed off. Mm-hmm. So it's like, well, okay, I guess we got to move on, but we're not we're not getting him where he wants to go. Well, sorry, especially if the agent is getting out in front of the whole process, leaking everything. Right. Le- leaking, right. sabotaging everything. Like any ounce of leverage Portland had, they're like, you're screwing us, man. Like you're telling it, the yeah, whole he world he's only not going is there. going to Miami. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. It's, by the sounds of it, that may have been the, what happened even in Toronto. In the end, Messiah and company may have said, we just can't trust this guy. Like he, yeah. he is so anti Toronto. By the way, the team might have got that stuff out there. The team might have said, the, the Dame's agent might have said, let's just keep this on the down low. And the team said, oh, no. Here it comes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. But in the end, he ends up in Milwaukee, and you know now it's starting to leak out what the Heat were willing to give up, and I'm not sure I believe that either. 
Because I think Pat Riley and company, they're in damage control, right? Like, they got to yes. try to convince their own fans they were trying. So everyone now it's like, oh, they're giving up Hero, three first-rounders. All I'm like, I'm not buying that. Because as much as Portland might be spiteful, if the deal is substantially better than what they got, they'd probably still take it. Because Dame's going to the East anyway. It's not like he's, you know, playing down the road. It's not like he's going to Sacramento or the Lakers or the Clippers or something. He's going to the East. You know, Portland, as much as they might be bitter with the process, if you're going to offer a much better uh, option, then I think they still would have taken it. So I'm, I'm yeah. not convinced there's any truth in that anyway. But everyone's, you know, scrambling now to explain. Like, even the Raptors, you'll notice, now it's leaking out. They weren't going to put Siakam on. They, they wouldn't put OG on. They wouldn't put Scotty on. I'm not sure I believe that either. But now that they still have those guys, they got to try to get it out that they weren't ever going to trade them. Right? right. It's, it's more about making your own people feel good. Like, no. Nah, damage we, control. Exactly. Oh, we weren't trading you, man. Never. Oh, we I never love put that. you on. I alone. love that one. We wouldn't possibly After put the you. fact. The articles came out immediately. The Raptors are like, we weren't even that interested. Right. It's like, give yeah. me a break. Man. Yeah, come on, man. <laughs> like, come on. It's a smart play, and some people will buy it, but I, I don't think it's so, like, man. Give me a break. Yeah, we wouldn't trade anybody. You know, Otto Porter, yeah. no way. We love Otto. We're, we're, we wouldn't, never would we ever move on from him. Precious and Chua, we love him. Wouldn't possibly flip him for Damian Lillard. <laughs> we wouldn't do it. We love you too much. Um, yeah. How about that Mark Stone last night, that Vegas LA preseason game where. That was a huge hit. What, well, that was a great hit. I thought it was yeah. a great hit. And Howden Hodgson is the, the guy's name. He's not a kid. He's 27 years old. He's been in the minors. He played a little bit with Philly the last couple of years. He's trying to make a team. And I love that hit for him, and I love shoulder it. to shoulder. It's wasn't a great it? hit, and and listen, I I understand why Stone isn't happy about it. But if I'm Hodgson, I couldn't care less about Mark Stone and his history. I'm trying yeah. to save my life as a professional hockey player. If I got to hit you, yeah. if I got to hit Sid, if I got to hit McDavid, I'm doing it, man. I, I have an appreciation for that. This guy's trying to. That make is his a career. guy fighting for his life. Yes. But the thing is, I'll I'll tell you what. I just think in preseason, understanding what Mark Stone's been through in his career, I don't know. About Why is that, that his priority? Like if if, if Stone can't, okay. play, but if he can't play, then don't play. Like he's supposed to no, lay I, off a hit because Stone's had issues with his back. I, well, I, I just think there no, should be some it. old school respect there. Twenty years ago, that hit doesn't happen because the guy's like, I'm not going to take a run at this guy. But that's the way the yeah, games change. And you know what? The kid's fighting for his life. Exactly. If that's the way he's got to get noticed, then go ahead. I'm just saying I didn't I didn't love it. And I think he should have got his face beaten in for it, to well, be quite but honest with that you. That is the old school. I, I think there's an old school both ways that you can swing it. I was 30 years ago, this Hodgson guy is like, I got to hit and fight four times tonight to make the team. Yep. So I'm going to do it. And I do appreciate that guy trying to make a statement. Yes. Hayes. I, I get it. That's all he's got. No, it, exactly. He's not going to rip home three goals and two assists and be like, Okay, Luke Robitaille, you know, and yeah. Rob Blake, what do you well, think it, about it, that? It, it's it's a very fine line because you can see both sides of the argument. You don't want your stars getting hit or hurt in preseason by a guy who's not going to play in the NHL. That's Mark Stone's take. Because even his comments after, he's like, yeah, that's the only time I'll play against that guy. I'll never so hear from him again. So it's okay if, a, if Kopitar did that to him? What does no, it matter not, if the that, guy's not going to Well, play? if this guy's going to go down to the, the East Coast the League for the rest of his career, what the hell was he even involved in that game for? I, I here Here's my thing, guys. Always bring it home. Let's bring it to Canada. If McDavid gets run over by a guy who's uh, – who did they play last night? They played Vancouver. Mm -hmm. Vancouver has a guy that played in Abbotsford last year that's a 27-year-old veteran, and you know they gave him a game because he had a good camp and all of that, good feeling, and – McDavid gets run over. We're probably going. All right, McDavid shouldn't be hit in training. I I will never say that. I will. So if never Matthews say that. gets run over by a guy, like, by you know a guy, who do they play next? Who does who does um, the Leafs play? I'm not sure. Buffalo, Toronto I think Maple again, Leafs or... at Montreal tomorrow. So right. Montreal's got a 29 year old kid that played in the minors his whole career and running around, and he runs Matthews like that. Don't you think people would have a problem? Yes, I, 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 I can. That's why I'm saying I think no, both. I can see both sides. But that's it, right. My, but that's the point. I, I don't. I don't. I'm not disputing why Stone was pissed. I get why he right. would be pissed. I get why Matthews would be pissed. I get why McDavid would be pissed. What I'm saying is, right. I understand why this guy is like. I got to hit somebody, and I don't care yeah, that no. you're Mark Stone. And, and what is Mark Stone gonna 
pay this guy professional money for the next decade so that he doesn't hit him. Like his life is on the line. That's the point. Yeah, and no. and that's hockey. It's a physical sport. I I don't. I just I I take issue with the idea that this guy's supposed to pull up because Mark Stone had had injury history. I, I just I don't buy that. I. I I well, understand I, why they all jumped them, and I think it's a great sign by Vegas, and that's probably a portion of why they won the cup. Hey, at the end of the day, you're right. right. Like, the kid's trying to make a yeah, name for right. himself. He made the hit. If he ever does stick around, he's going to get his ass kicked every time he plays the Vegas Golden Knights, and that's just something he's going to have to deal with. And you know what? But he'll maybe be he'll getting beat paid up NHL a, money, man. You're, you're damn right. right. And maybe he'll beat up a couple guys and say, you know what? You're not going to do that, so chew on that one. Mm -hmm. If you want it again next game, go ahead. But yeah. like I said, it, it, different game, and it, maybe nothing happens of it. Maybe we just never see the guy again. It, I have no idea. It seems I've never likely heard of the we, guy. Well, exactly. It seems likely we won't. You know, like yeah. I, I don't right. imagine he makes the team. And, and listen, that's I guess let, that's my point, Brian. If I was playing a game like that, and some kid from the East Coast League who's never been around. And it's like if Jeremy Roenick ran me over in their corner, all right, boys will be boys, whatever. But mm -hmm. if some guy that played in the coast his whole career, it's like trying to take liberties on me to make a name for himself, and then he's back on the coast in two days, I got a problem with it. That that's the I guess that's the Mark Stone argument. Exactly. And we could see the argument from Hayes's point is right. He's got a jersey on out there and there's not a it, he, you know, Stone's not wearing a, a non contact jersey. Right. Like he, you could and it wasn't a dirty hit. It was now, a great was hit. It, was it like you could argue he did come from away, so I didn't see the whole. Like I was actually watching last night. Did, was it a bit of a charge Maybe or whatever? Maybe it's a charge. Maybe it's but, a charge. But listen. But I, it, you know, it, it is a, it's a tough scenario because you, you don't want anybody, especially a guy like Stone who had back surgery and that, to like miss games because but of a then throw don't away play. game. But then don't I get th it. That's on Vegas, I is my it. point. That's yep. not on the opposition ever. That's not fair to the opposition to take no, into I consideration the, the injury history of a player on the other team. My, my thing is, if it was dirty, if he was being a goofball and challenging him to a fight or something, I'd be all over that kid saying you're a goofball yeah. and that's being silly. I thought it was just a great hit. And it was. Like I that's that's totally within the rules of the game and totally within the rules. There was a time when you guys were playing. There'd be yeah. there'd be four or five guys that showed up at camp and they said, The only way the GM knows me is if I throw fifteen hits in five fights. That's how I'm gonna yeah. get noticed. And there would be guys that would be like, I'm doing it because I want to play in the NHL. Like I ha and I'm not, I don't know this kid enough to know his inspiration. I just there's a part of me that really appreciates where he's like, I got to do something here, and I, it's not I don't, I'm not responsible yeah. for Mark Stone's health. I'm going to hit the guy, and he got his gloves off quick. He knew they were coming for him, and they did. And I don't know. I, well, I get it from Stone's it, it, perspective, but you're playing and you got hit. Yeah, you're it, you're. It, it's a great point, and it's valid, and it's actually probably the view that everybody should have. But we're just looking at it. I'm looking at it from the star stars standpoint. These guys, mm -hmm. Stone's probably going. I don't need this. I'm just trying to get ready for the season. <laughs> of course but, he is. That's where but, I'd be looking at it I, from. Of course like, he is. Yeah, I, but I, I don't you need this guy guys? running around trying to get a piece of me. It's like you, you're you're going back to the coast, Hazy. I know. I, listen, I, I, I get it. But again, then that's on Stone to go to his coach, Bruce Cassidy, and say, "Don't play me anymore." I don't need yeah. to play. And maybe that happens with the NHL. I know it's mandated. You have to play a certain amount or whatever. Dude, screw this preseason. It's nonsense. I Quarterbacks know don't play in the NFL. No, but the whole thing, like play two or three exhibition games and then get on with the regular season. There is no way that training camp well, needs to be four weeks long or whatever the hell it is. I think Stone reacts the same way, though, even if that's Drew Doughty that throws that hit. Like, I don't think he knew who it was that smoked him. He just got up and dropped no. his gloves and snapped because he thought it was a big hit. And he's probably... With the mentality that you guys are suggesting, I'm easing into this. I couldn't care less if this. And works. that's the thing, Drew Doughty wouldn't have thrown that hit, uh -huh. not in preseason. Well, I, I, Maybe yeah, not because he's Drew thing. Doughty. He doesn't have to. Well, there was a. I don't know if you well Google this name for hockey DB Tyler Willis. You remember, I had a guy show up at training camp in St. Louis, late '90s, and you're right, Hayes. All he did was fight. He fought four times in one scrimmage to the point where the GM, Larry Plo, came out of the stands and leaned over the glass and said, you got to stop fighting. Because he, mm -hmm. he fought like Mark Bergman, I think, fought him and broke his hand on his head because he ran Al McInnes yep. in, in training camp. Because right. these guys were trying to make a name for themselves. Now, Tyler Wells was tough as nails, not a big guy, but he was trying to make a statement 
in an inner squad game running like a star player. Well, which in that I would suggest is crossing a bit of a line when it's your own team. But this is the LA Kings versus the Vegas Golden Knights. He is not yeah. responsible for the well being of Mark Stone. If he does something yeah. illegal, he is. He has to pay a price. You're right. But throwing yeah. a big hit, I'm sorry. You can't the star players don't get to go out there with red jerseys on saying, Don't hit me. I used to I love an inner squad games where a guy would take a run at a veteran player and a guy on his own team would drop the gloves <laughs> that, with them and beat that, the snot out of him. That's what happened. Mark Bergevin was on Tyler Willis's team and went and fought him yeah. because his partner was Al McGinnis. Like the best in, thing. In real guy life. in his and own he... line would just drop his gloves and sucker him <laughs> and say, what do you think you're doing? Do you guys remember the video years ago of Bill Guerin two two handing yes. a guy at training camp? That you was nasty, that? man. Wasn't that Ooh. over the head? I think he two. I, I think it was over the head, dude. Across I the don't, neck. I, I thought it, it was, was like it was a neck. high. Like that's a twenty game suspension oh, in a game. Yeah. Like that was. Either way, I mean, Brian, you make a great point. Like, and I agree with you. It's just I could see the wheels. Turning from veteran players, going. I God, see it I just too. want to get through. It, I totally know? get why Stone was pissed. I have not. I yeah. don't have an issue with what he said afterwards either, because it's sports. It's emotional. He was still pissed. You know. Yeah. We have. Do you want to play the audio? We have the audio right here's Mark Stone okay. after the game talking about that hit. Okay. <laughs> All right. Together. Uh, that's probably the last time I'll ever play against that guy. Uh, not really much of a yep. player, so. Leave it at that. <laughs> you go unedited and tell us what you said to Brant Clark and your brother. Uh, I scared him a little, didn't I? Uh, <laughs> no, I honestly I was looking around for you know some of their talented players and trying to run at them, and he was the only, really the only one. So uh, it's unfortunate you're playing against uh, you know a team like that. They're trying to make a name for themselves, and you know using preseason. The, Did Brant know. Clark respond to you during that little uh, interaction? No, it's done. We're done. Anything else? All right. There you go. All right. Yeah. Yeah, it is what it is. It's over. They probably won't see each other again anyway, but that that's a big robbery, though, L.A. and Vegas, right? What uh, if he makes a team because of that? He very well you know, could. Maybe he, was, maybe he was a cusp guy, and they're like, you know what? This guy is is playing in, in, for keeps out there, mm-hmm. which is something that you want. So, yeah, I don't it, know. Is, it is possible. All right, Mark Masters in uh, about 20 minutes. You got uh, the Jays, Yankees tonight, Packers, Lions as well. Overdrive continues. TSN 1050 and on the TSN app. All right, Mark Masters will join us in about 15 minutes. Leaf off today. Full day off for the whole team. I would assume that means possibly some cuts coming, you know, in the next day or two, and they're going to really whittle this down. And, and for the most part, we know who's going to be on the team come opening night, but uh, we're getting close. Right, we're less than two weeks away from opening night, so yeah. Mark Masters will join us, and we'll get his take on the Vasilevsky surgery. If you're not aware of this, Andre Vasilevsky has undergone back surgery; he's out for the next eight to ten weeks. What kind of ripple effect that could have on the Leafs, the Atlantic Division, etc. So Masters coming up in about 15. Ryder Cup beginning tomorrow. You see that Luke Donald is sending John Rahm and Tyrrell Hatton out together. Dude, they're going to fight people on the course. The two biggest snap shows on tour, they snap all the time. <laughs> and swear and yell. Yeah. And it's, I can't wait to see it. But what you said it yesterday, like it starts at 1 a.m., like our time. Yes, 1.30 they go out. That's the first group. They're done. By the time you get up, I know you get up early, but they'll be well off the course. That is crazy, yeah, man. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. That stink. If I that didn't sucks. have to work tomorrow, because I could not work if I got up at one thirty in the morning, if I had a nap, I would feel like I traveled around the world on some crazy flight or something. Mm-hmm. Like you would feel hungover at 4 p.m. Oh, yeah. If you got up at one thirty and tried to get all the way through to 4, you'd be toast. Yeah, you're done. Yeah, you got panel work tomorrow, too, don't you? Aren't you the, yes. Like, least, yeah. yeah. Oh, you, you, you'll be Pete Rose. <laughs> I sleep on the panel. You'd be Pete Rose on the panel. You'd fall asleep. But... <laughs> 100%. Imagine what are they playing in the morning? Is it alternate shot or no? Yeah, if it was alternate uh, shot, can you imagine if they started snapping on each other? It is. It's foursomes, I believe, in the morning, so it's alternate shot, I believe, and then four ball in the afternoon. I think I, I got to look that up, but that's the thing. They'll literally be snapping on each other, like nice shot, dope. 
yeah. yelling at each other. Yeah. Brutal lie. Thanks for that. Why'd you hit driver? What are you doing? Dude, right. I don't care who you are, what the situation is. When you're playing alternate shot and your partner absolutely just jams you up, you hate his guts yes. for five seconds. You have to. Yeah, it, it's just a natural. It's like, how could you do that to me? Well, and then I feel like there's a part of it, if the guy recovers, you're almost still embarrassed because the guy had to hit. Remember that Duvall and Tiger situation? You remember that? The famous chip in by Tiger Woods where David Duvall absolutely sewered him <laughs> in an alternate shot. I want to say it was a President's Cup. Like he chiseled a three iron, like a shanked three iron to the side, short-sided pin, and Tiger had to hold it to like, saw off the match and he ended up chipping it in it was amazing but even Duvall was like basically Monty grin screwing I'm like eh, yeah, man, you <laughs> want it for us but uh, remember if anyone sees Monty throughout the week send in the vids because <laughs> he'll be grin screwing everyone there yes, walking is he on the team is he on the staff no, no I don't think so but he's there helping he's Just definitely keep there an eye. Helping. yeah keep an eye yeah. on him yeah we will all right final hour coming up overdrive continues TSN 1050 and on the TSN app